sex addiction seems to combine these elements with more frequency and more intensity than any of the other activities. While looking at pornographic imagery, excitatory neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, causing the body to become extremely energized, just like the high of cocaine. It gave me a, like a, an adrenaline rush, like I was doing speed or something. It feels like this incredible charge of life flowing through my veins. It's like getting a rush in the arm of adrenaline. At the height of this energized state, orgasm occurs, causing the release of endorphins, which create relaxation and euphoria. So right there in the pornographic experience, we have a synthesis of arousal, relaxation, and fantasy unparalleled in any of the other addictions. We now understand that the pornography experience can trigger natural neurochemicals in the brain just as powerfully or perhaps even more powerfully than the drug experience. Let's go back into the brain to see how a physical addiction to pornography can be created by the overstimulation of these neurochemicals. The brain has a built-in neurochemical feedback mechanism that works against dramatic mood alterations. As soon as a mood alteration takes place, the brain goes into action to stabilize the mood and restore baseline neurotransmission. Over time, as the user continues to indulge in the pornography experience, the brain reacts by producing less and deactivating more neurotransmitters. The delicate level of neurotransmission that produces a normal mood is now altered and has become dysfunctional. It's this dysfunctional level of neurotransmission that causes the uncomfortable symptoms of physical addiction, tolerance, dependence, and withdrawal. Because there are now less neurotransmitters in the system, it takes a harder, perhaps more violent form of pornography to achieve the same sexual arousal. Just like a drug addict needing a larger dose to get high, this is tolerance. Because the dysfunctional rate of neurotransmission is uncomfortable, the addict uses pornography to bring it to a normal level. He is dependent on it, just like an addict becomes dependent on a drug. If he tries to quit using pornography, he will experience actual physical discomfort. Again, just like a drug addict, this is withdrawal. Sex addicts also have a withdrawal experience. In other words, physically there is a withdrawal experience. Uh, it's different than, say, alcoholics who experience a withdrawal that happens in about three days. And it's very intense and then you dry out. It is much more like what happens with cocaine addicts. The withdrawal was very hard. Very, it came on very fast and it was very brutal. I experienced uh, withdrawal that I had never experienced from drugs or alcohol. When I stopped looking at pornography, it was hard. It was like a heroin addict trying to quit cold turkey. One of the things that occurs is they have extreme insomnia. If they really try to stop, their body then starts to resist this. Did you feel like when you had to stop pornography, was it like withdrawal? Yeah, I was like, it was definitely withdrawal for me. And then, I, you know, I, would, I was depressed. I wouldn't talk to my friends and stuff. <laughs> I was going crazy, you know? One of the more fascinating things to me as I talk with sex addicts is that cocaine is one of the drugs of choice of sex addicts. Another aspect of the pornography experience that adds to the addictive nature is the extreme emotional low or shame that directly follows the intense arousal. It's these two emotional extremes that create the addictive cycle. The high is followed by a low. The low is so painful that the user is easily tempted into pornography use, again, to escape the pain. With each use, the addict becomes more emotionally dependent on pornography to feel good. This is called psychological addiction. The cycle is also common in drug addiction. However, the sexual addiction seems to stimulate a much more devastating sense of shame that can cause extreme emotional trauma. See? The problem with shame in these sexual addiction and pornography addictions is that it has a very powerful crippling effect upon the man. And in fact, what it does is it pulls him deeper into the addiction. And the more he indulges his appetite, the more he feels ashamed about it and degraded and abased. And the more that makes him vulnerable to go out and do it again. So it's kind of like a spiraling circle that goes down, down, down. That shame breaks the bridges you have with everyone around you, spouse, family, children, friends, people at work. And the result of it is, is that you become more and more isolated. I felt so empty. I felt so alone. One of the things you'll frequently hear them say is, 
I, I couldn't talk to anybody about what was really going on inside of me. You don't dare talk to people about it. It's, uh, it's something you're so ashamed of you won't, won't tell your yeah, best well, friend. I'm kind of we're talking like, here about something that literally catapults people into an abyss of pain. I know I've been to the point where I was almost tempted to just do away with myself because I, I couldn't see any, any way out. The only way I knew out was to end my life, and I looked forward to that. And the only relief you have is the addiction. Pornography ultimately is a manual on gender, how to be masculine and how to be feminine. The stories and stuff that were in the magazines, there were stories, you know, byline stories and stuff like that about how she likes this and how she wants this and how good it was to her. And, and I got hooked on it. I got to thinking that it was true. I got to believing that it was true. I think in our culture, where there's very little open and honest talk about sex in any way that highlights the power dynamics of heterosexuality and of gender. What happens is pornography comes in and fills a vacuum and I think it does teach important lessons about how to be male and what to expect from women. When you look at pornography, do you learn anything about women? Do you learn about sex? What do you learn? Uh, I, definitely, you learn. I mean, sometimes you'll be a little bit passive, but then a lot of women like you to be aggressive. So you learn new techniques maybe try to be a little more aggressive with the girl when you have her in the bedroom. Pornography delivers an image of masculinity that is dominant, that is removed from emotion, that is removed from um, any moral decision. What I learned from pornography, I learned, I learned to, to do it now. I learned, I, learned, I learned to have no inhibitions about it, you know what I'm saying? I learned to, I learned to be free. Pornography portrays women as things, things to be penetrated. That's what women are in pornography, very clearly. And I think what men learn from that, or rather what they're relearning again and again from all the images, and especially through pornography, is that women exist for male use. Pornography taught me over the years that, uh, that women were sluts, that uh, they were sex objects, they were just to be used sexually. What have you learned about women? Uh, that, that they want sex more than they, than they admit, that they want to have sex all the time. There's no, nothing human about her. Everything that makes human beings human is stripped away in pornography. And in its place, men are delivered a pair of breasts, a vagina, an anus, and every orifice that you can imagine that a penis can be stuck into. I learned, uh, I learned doggy style. Uh, I learned how to, you know, do the clit. I know how to work it. I know all that stuff, you know? Front way, sideways, in the back. All the good stuff. And that's what pornography is very good at doing. It's good at stripping away the humanity of women and delivering this object to a man.